Hello there, I am Steve and you're all welcome back to Temple Boy Turnins. This week I am turning a banana on the lathe. Why not? Um, I was on Eloy Escajado's uh, live show on Tuesday last week um, and the show went on for a long time. I'll leave the link to Eloy's uh, YouTube channel and uh, his show, The Mad Maker Show. Um, but uh, the show went on very long, for about three hours in the end. But Sterling Davis, another maker that was on the panel, challenged me to make a banana on the lathe or turn a banana on the lathe. Now, they have been made on bandsaws and on... Uh, actually, Sterling has just done a video of making one on his scroll saw. So, again, the link will be below in the description. You can go and check that video out. Uh, so this is how I turned a banana from a piece of beech log. I've marked five points of reference on each end of this log. Uh, one to four and then five is the center on each end. Now we're starting off at one end on the center and the other end on number one. The tail stock is going to be number one and the headstock is going to be center. And we're just between the centers at the moment. You can see it's very much off center. And we're going to start just taking out the bulk of the wood and giving the illusion that we're bending the wood. As you can see, it's starting to take a chunk out of it. And you can't really use the bevels uh, of the tools when you're doing this work because you're cutting a lot more air than you are actually material. So. Uh, it's hard to actually run a bevel along the wood. So there you go, you can see there's a curve. We've turned it around now, we're going to go number one and center again, but we've turned the wood around. Okay. And now we're going to take the other side or the other end away from the center. And we're going to just blend them in the best we can. They're not going to match up exactly which is okay because bananas aren't uniform they're, you know they're not cylindrical they have edges they have twists bruises and all kinds of sort of and I want to make this banana as authentic as possible using scraper there uh, it's a good tool when you're doing off-centered work like this or multi-axis because you get good grounding on the tool rest okay next stage number one and number one. So we're going to the far side of the piece of wood. And we're going to take out the very center now. So we've brought the two ends down and now we're going to take the curve out from the center and blend where we've turned from each end in. And just kind of blend it all into one. And this gives us our main curve in the wood as you'll see there. Now you can take as much as you want out here and put as big a bend as you want in but bear in mind that you have got to think about how much wood you have left the other side so we're going number one and number three next number one going to the headstock and number three going to the tailstock and there you go once again we're just shaping it and this is taken out from the back end now so we're forming the uh, the back end of the banana and making it look really curved. Now you'll see the shape starts to appear. Now when you're marking your numbers each end, make sure that number one is opposite to number one, number two opposite to two, and so on all the way around, so it doesn't confuse you. There we go, we're really starting to get the bend in it now. Now a piece broke off, I lost number one, one end, but that's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go by centers that end anyway, I'm not too worried. And number three. Now we're at the center of the headstock there and we're on number three on the tailstock. You can see it's really uh, off center there. And this is the other end of the curve now. So we're taking the back end of the other end. And at the moment it's kind of a bent, very wide, flat banana. And you see how we reduce the width of of the log in a second so it's more like a flat flat banana so that's number four and number four so this is where we start reducing the width of the banana or the log however you want to look at it 
So we're really off centre and now we're literally just taking the whole side all the way the full length of the log. We're nearly the full length of the log. I'm, I'm not right telling you that. But we want to leave a tenon. So we don't want to take it right out. This is why I'm using the gouge here. I'm leaving a tenon because we're going to be reversing that and putting it in the chuck. So that we can finish one end of the banana where the stalk will be. You'll see that in a second. There we go, so that's taken a whole chunk off the side and it's narrowed the banana down now. And we do the opposite again, number two, number two, back between centres and we take that whole side out as well, again remembering that we're forming the tenon on the other end. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. <laughs> They're actually a lot of fun. Uh, if you're not, if you've not done off-centered or multi-axis turning before, this might not be the best project to start with. Do some practicing with a piece of softwood and uh, and go from there, and then give it a try. But you can see there now that we've really thinned out the banana. Now we're going to the center and number one. Number one going to the tail stock center going to the head side. And again we're using the scraper, you get good ground on the tool rest, you get a lot of chatter because it's a lot it's air then wood, air then wood and you want to turn these as fast as your machine will allow you to turn it and as fast as you are brave to turn it. Um, you get a better cut. There we go, we're going to the center. Think about it Steve. And number three. This is, like I say, this is only the second banana I ever turned, so it really is challenging, but good fun. Again, using the scraper, and this is just refining the shape now, trying to bring all the curves in together. using the tail stock as much as you can for as long as you can. Now eventually you'll see that we run out of material to use the tail stock as we turn the, the as we turn the stalk of the banana down. That's what we're working on now. Um, so you will eventually lose the use of the tail stock. But use it as much as you can just for that extra stability. And again we're uh, we're just moving it to suit the cuts. This is where it's kind of down to you when you start turning it to how whatever shape your banana is to how you work the stalk. But take small pieces off, stop it, take pieces off, stop it, and you know, there's no rush. And you'll eventually get the shape. And you'll start learning how to orientate the, the piece of wood to get the best shape you, you can get. This is just bringing down the stalk, trying to keep it uniform with the rest of the banana so that it's not kind of odd looking. And now this is where we're going to be away from the tail stock. We're away from the tail stock there now. So this is where we've got to be careful using the parting tool just to uh, get good ground again. And you can see I'm using it backwards. It just seem to cut a lot better that way. There we go, you can see it's starting to take shape. Going the other way. You tend to go a lot of opposites, you'll turn it one way and then you push it right back the op extreme opposite. And it, and it tends to turn uniform curves and bends that you need. There we go. So now I am orientating that near enough centre to the chuck. And I'm going to use the parting tool to bring it down. And we're trying to get it round now. Now it's not going to be completely round because we are still very much off centre. Uh, so we have to jump back between centers again, as you'll see in just a second. This is just 
uh, blending the, kind of the body of the banana and blending it into the stalk so that it just doesn't look like two separate parts. Okay, and now we're going to put it between centers again. Put the step center into the chuck. And I'm centralizing not to the center of the tenon, but to the center as close as I can to the center of where the stalk is and then lining it up along through the center of the lathe and that way we can get a round stalk in line with the, the banana. And this is just blending the stalk in now using the parting tool. Part, that's the gouge there but the parting tool is a very good tool for shaping as well in tight spots and the f fun and fabulous sanding that's just knocking off the edges kind of rounding over the edges so it doesn't look like wood it looks like a banana now and now we are working on bringing the other end of the banana down and still trying to keep the natural curve of the banana coming round we don't want just like an odd looking piece of wood sticking off the back so we want to keep it all banana looking and as you can see it's still taking shape you will have a bit of waste wood that you'll be cutting off and again orientating it between centers to uh, to suit the shape of the banana it, re it really is quite simple this project it looks a lot more complicated than it is but now we've got the parting tool, it's just shaping the back end of the banana and you can see we have banana shape. You use the sandpaper just to knock off, the there's just, there was just a slight wide piece there that would have been hard to turn. And then we do the magic, we're going to work on the details now of the banana. We're just using the little uh, blowtorch to burn all the edges and we're going to make a banana that's slightly bruised. I don't think there's many perfectly yellow bananas. I'm talking to my son there. I have no idea what I'm saying. It's not all that interesting. It's more interesting when it's speeded up. <laughs> and that's the uh, the boiler or the furnace, as they say, they say stateside in the background. Sorry about that. Okay, and now we're going to add some colour. This is tattoo ink that I get given to me from Curtis Campbell. He has a uh, tattoo uh, studio in the UK and he uses, he sends me his inks that have gone out of date and I can use them on my woodwork. And they're, they're very vibrant colours and natural colours. They're very cool looking as you can see. But I also found out while doing this piece that when you scorch this paint it changes colours and uh, it actually looks more authentic. It's kind of cool so that was an accidental uh, tip that I picked up. So I scorch it again just to bring the, the black again back through and this is where I find out that kind of the paint kind of really did do like a, a cool colouring which made it look more banana. Complete fluke. There you go. There we go. Parting off the last bit. And I will sand that off camera. You won't see me sanding that. It was just hand sanding. And then scorch the back end of it. Again, just to remind you that uh, I did I, I did my original one of these on Eloy's show. And, on, and you can go and check out his channel. And check out Sterling Davis as well. They're both excellent channels. Just adding a bit of oil. Uh, boiled linseed oil just to pop the colours and uh, make it more authentic and there you go one banana top banana good enough to eat that's it guys if you have any questions please fire them in the comments please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you're not already subscribed thanks to the subscribers that have just joined it's awesome almost at 20,000 I will be doing a giveaway at 20,000 there's my banana.
Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.